What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Dan Tam Ray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Friday, June 24th, 2016, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment report and it'll take you to the page. Michael Bay has revealed a new Autobot on social media named Squeaks for his upcoming Transformers sequels, The Last Night. The director wrote on, on Facebook Wednesday, my talented young co-star of Transformers, Isabella Monner, and introducing a new character, Squeaks, which he showed off Squeaks for the first time alongside Monner, who portrays the film's female lead. The teal-colored Squeaks, who was revealed to have a short and small body with a round helmet shaped head to go along with two big headlights looking eyes. The character's design is a departure from his fellow Autobot's towering, powerful look including Bumblebee, whose Camaro has a new look in the actioner. Squeaks will be joining the battle against the, the, the evil Decepticons and a returning Megatron when Transformers The Last Night blasts into theaters June 23, 2017. Bay claims The Last Night will be his last Transformers film. However, Paramount has already dated the new batch of Transformers films, including Transformers 6 on June 8, 2018 and Transformers 7 on June 28, 2019. Star Wars The Force Awakens breakout star John Boyega is teaming up with Catherine Bigelow and Mark Boyle on their upcoming Zero Than 30 follow-up, which centers around the 1967 Detroit riots. Now much is known about the still unnamed film other than it seeks to explore racism in the five days of unrest in Detroit during the summer of 67. A 2017 release is likely and will coincide with the 50th anniversary of the riots. Also on the burn for Boyega is a sequel to 2013's Pacific Rim, which Boyega is also co-producing. Despite best efforts from Harry Potter-related social media accounts, the recent live stream VidCon Q&A session was not well received by fans of the franchise. In anticipation of the upcoming Potter-themed film Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, the official Fantastic Beasts Twitter and other Potter outlets invited fans for a live panel discussion which asked fans to share their excitement and ask questions about the film. The moderators, attendees, soon learned were not related to the films or the franchise, but instead were YouTube stars whose only direct connect with the movie was a visit to the site. Though the panel was a bit of a letdown, the excitement for the film itself has only grown since the full trailer was released in April. The movie, based on characters from J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter universe, tells the story of Newt Scalamander, played by Eddie Redmayne, who devoted his life to the study and classification of magical creatures. Scalamander finds himself in New York City in the 1920s, and drama ensues when some of his magical creatures gets loose in the city. Colin Farrell, Ron Perlman, John Voight, and Dan Folger, also star. Fantastic Beats hits in in theaters in November. Ben Affleck unleashed an epic rant defending Tom Brady and slamming the ongoing deflate gate saga on Bill Simmons' new HBO sports talk show, Any Given Wednesday. Uh, the Justice League star passionately began his exploitive-filled speech Wednesday on the show's series premiere. Deflate Gate is the ultimate outrage of sports ever. It's so effing stupid that I can't believe it. Affleck, a noted Boston native sports fan, just like Simmons, is angry at the NFL's decision to suspend Brady, the star quarterback for the New England Patriots, for four games after that he was at least generally aware that the team's staff had tampered with the inflation of footballs dur- used during the 2015 AFC Championship game. The actor also explained like how, like Brady, he wouldn't hand over his cell phone to the NFL who asked for his mobile device during their investigation. He says, I would never give an organization as leak prone as the NFL my cell phone so you can just look through my emails and listen to my my voicemails. He continued about why Brady may have withheld his cell phone. Maybe it's just funny. Lovely sex messages from his wife. Maybe Tom Brady is just so classy and such a gentleman that he doesn't want people to know that he may have reflected on his real opinion of some of his co-workers. Affleck explained, this is a a conspiracy of people working inside the NFL who all come from organizations that Tom Brady whipped their their asses over the last 10-15 years. Brady has fought the suspension in court against NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell. The athlete filed an appeal for a secondary hearing in May 
by the Second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals to overturn a 2-1 decision from April 26 to reinstate his four-game suspension. Should the appeal be denied, Brady's next step will be taking place at the Supreme Court. If the suspension is upheld, Brady will miss New England's first four games in 2016 against the Arizona Cardinals, the Miami Dolphins, the Houston Texans, and the Buffalo Bills. He could be eligible to return on October 16th against the Cleveland Browns. Gotham has recast Poison Ivy for Season 3. The Fox series revealed Maggie Geha will replace Claire Foley in a tweet Wednesday. The show wrote on its official Twitter, We are excited to announce at Megan Geha as Poison Ivy on hashtag Gotham. Geha will play an older ver- version of Foley's Ivy Pepper, the young Poison Ivy. The character ages after a run-in with the monster from Indian Hill, bring her, quote, one step closer to the DC villain she is destined to become, Poison Ivy. The new Poison Ivy is a 19-year-old woman who has heart Harness the full powers of her charms. Season 3 will see the characters set her sights on Bruce Wayne, played by David Mazos, the young Batman. Gotham Ghost stars Ben McKenzie as James Gordon and will return on September 19th. Gay has known for playing Susan on All My Children and appeared in the movies Winter Tale and Ted 2. Nashville will be short two cast members when it moves to CMT for season five. Will Chase and Aubrey Peebles, who plays Luke Wheeler and Layla Grant, won't return as series regulars, according to TV Line. Chase appeared to confirm the news by tweeting, Cowboy boots off tap shoes on Stay Tuned on Wednesday. He followed up the next day with a sarcastic response to a fan who said his role was irrelevant anyways. Deadline reported Chase and Peebles may have retur- may return to guest star, depending on their availability. The website said the actor's departure is not surprising, given their war- waning storylines and the show's move from ABC to CMT. CMT picked up Nashville this month after ABC canceled the musical drama in May. Negotiations with other cast members are still underway with Connie Britton, Chip Esten, and Claire Bowen expected to return. CMT head of programming Jason Dinsmore said in uh, to Deadline, our expectations and our hopes that it is that everyone will participate in this next cycle. Nashville star Hayden Panettiere had announced her return to rehab for postpartum depression the same day of the show's cancellation. The actors temporarily left the series in season four to seek treatment for the condition. Elizabeth Banks was deemed too old for the 2002 movie Spider-Man. The 42-year-old actress revealed as much in an interview with Glamour UK and growing concerns about ageism in Hollywood. She said, I was screen test for the role of Mary Jane Watson in the first Spider-Man movie opposite Tobey Maguire. Tobey and I are basically the same age, and I was told I was too old to play her. I'm like, oh, okay, that's what I've signed up for. Banks and Maguire were 26 and 25, respectively, when an 18-year-old Kristen Dunst landed the role of Mary Jane. Banks instead played Daily Bugle reporter Betty Brand in the Spider-Man trilogy starring Maguire. She told reporters in 2008, I was a nobody. I had no expectations of even being in that movie. The casting director called and said, as a consolation prize, essentially, do you want to be Betty Brant? Olivia Wilde and Maggie, uh, Maggie uh, Gententhal are among the other actresses who have been deemed too old for roles. Wilde missed out on The Wolf of Wall Street while uh, Gyllenhaal was turned down for an unnamed project. Gyllenhaal told The Rap in 2015, I'm 37, and I was told recently I was too old to play the lover of a man who was 55. It was astonished to me. It made me feel bad, and then it made me feel angry, and then it made me laugh. Banks went on to play Elfie Trinket in the Hunger Games film series and starred and produced the Pitch Perfect p- uh, movies. She will portray Rita Repulsa in Power Rangers, which opens in theaters March 24th, 2017. Malcolm in the Middle star Brian Cranston says a reunion is possible. The 60-year-old actor who played Hal on the Fox series was optimistic about a revival or one-off while speaking to E! News at the 2016 Maui Film Festival. Cranston said, I sure hope so, I really do, for no other reason than I miss those people like crazy and I stay in touch with them. The boys are doing great and Jane Kremens, uh Karamaskic is doing wonderful and I love to. Uh, he revealed there's a possibility we want to start talking about the possibility of putting together a story that makes sense about the family 10 years or 12 years later. All I want to do is tell the story and have a good experience. Malcolm in the Middle had a 7 year run from 2000 to 2006. The series followed Malcolm played by Frankie Munoz a middle schooler with a genius IQ along with his parents played by Cranston and Karazin Marek and four brothers Christopher Masterson uh, Justin Birdfield, Eric Purcellvin, and James Lucas Rodriguez. Cranston's told E.T. Canada in September, it's been 10 years since Malcolm went off the air. It'd be fun to pick up that guy's clothes again and be fun and sweet and adorable and hapless and clueless and afraid of everything. Munoz has expressed interest in a sequel series earlier that month. The 30-year-old actor 
gauge interest in by tweeting, how fun would Malcolm in the midlife crisis be? I wonder what Malcolm and his family would be up to now. Cranston is also known for playing Walter White on Breaking Bad, which ended in 2013 after five seasons. The actor is slated for The Infiltrator with John Leguizamo and Power Rangers with Elizabeth Banks. Norman Reedus recently le- learned that there are people who dress like him and in his Walking Dead character Daryl Dixon for a living. The late night co-host Colin O'Brien asked the actor during Wednesday on an interview on Conan, your character on the show Daryl Dixon has become so popular that there are now professional impersonators. Is that right? Reedus said a friend of his ran into one of his impersonators while at a hotel. His friend told the man how much he resembled Reedus and asked if he dressed up as Daryl Dixon as a job. The man replied, I do that on the weekends, but on the weekdays I play Norman Reedus. Or Brian commented, that gets creepy. What if he's, like, writing checks in your name? Who knows what he's doing? Reedus replied, garnering laughter from the audience, I think he's getting laid. Outside of The Walking Dead, Reedus is now also the star of the new travel series on AMC entitled Ride with Norman Reedus, a reality show shot from the seat of a motorcycle. In the most recent episode of Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, Jerry Seinfeld and Margaret Cho climbed into a classic car and discussed the complexities of life. Margaret Cho and Jerry Seinfeld go way back. The comedian and actress talked to Seinfeld about her start as a high school dropout, being a disappointment to her Korean parents, and competing for the chance to open for Seinfeld and the valuable advice he gave her then. For his part, Seinfeld compared Cho to the classic car that he drives in the episode, a 1967 Mazda Cosmo, which he says is fun and unlike and unique like Cho. Cho, no stranger to controversial subject matter, talked to Seinfeld about a stand-up experience Experience earlier this year where she bombed. Cho explained what happened and that she wanted to go back to the club to try and rectify the situation, and Seinfeld offered to go with her and open her act. Taylor Lautner is heading for Screen Queen Season 2. The Fox horror comedy confirmed the 24-year-old actor's casting Thursday on Twitter, writing, We're howling over the new hot doctor. Hashtag Taylor Lautner is joining hashtag Screen Queens for Season 2. Entertainment Weekly reported Lautner will play Cassidy Cassade, a doctor who becomes involved with Chanel No. 3, played by Billy Lord, now a hospital employee. Cassidy, who suffers from a bizarre mental condition, becomes a suspect in a new wave of tragedies. Fuller House star John Stamos was previously announces Dr. Brock Holt, the hospital's brilliant but secretive head surgeon. Lord is returning alongside Emma Roberts, Abigail Breslin, Leah Michelle, and Jamie Lee Curtis. Curtis said of the new season to E! News in May, I think it'll be dark. I think it's going to be very dark. There's a lot of darkness in hospitals, dark hallways, scary rooms, sharp objects, a lot of blood, disinfectants. Screen Queen Season 2 will premiere September 20th. Lawner is best known for playing Jacob Black in the Twilight film series and has since portrayed Dale on the BBC3 sitcom Cuckoo. Catherine Heigl and husband Josh Kelly are expecting a baby boy. The 37 year old actress and 36 year old singer announced the news in a statement to People Magazine Thursday. The couple already have two daughters, seven year old Naley and four year old Adelai. Uh, the pair said that Kelly Klein is thrilled to announce that we are expecting a third addition to our family. Naley and Adelai cannot be more excited to welcome their new sibling into the fold, and Josh and I are overflowed with joy and gratitude. Heigl added, This is an incredibly exciting time for us, filled with hope, anticipation, and hormones. We couldn't be more excited to finally share the news with our fans and are looking forward to continuing to share the journey with you all. Heigl and Kelly married in 2007 after more than two years of dating. They adopted Naley from South Korea and Adelaide in the United States. Their son is due in January 2017. Uh, Kelly wrote on Instagram after the pregnancy announcement, Ha ha ha, I guess the cat's out of the bag. We're so excited. What an awesome journey. Can't wait to hold this little nugget. Heigl is best known for playing Izzy Stevens on Grey's Anatomy. And we'll start with Stephen Pascal in the new CBS series, Doubt. Kelly last released the album New Land Road in April. Black China thinks fiancé Rob Kardashian will make a great father. The 20-year-old model gushed about the 29-year-old reality star to the Daily Mail while attending the Daily Mail's seriously popular yacht party at the Cannes Lion Festival on Wednesday. Black China said of her husband-to-be, he's a generally loving person, he's really supportive, he's been supportive with me and even like the people that I'm around. I think he's going to do good. She added, pregnancy is treating me really, really good right now. I can't complain. The best part is just knowing that you have somebody that loves you unconditionally and you love them unconditionally. Black China Kardashian got engaged in April and announced the model's pregnancy the next month. Kardashian wasn't present at the party, but has made a gradual return to the spotlight since he and Black China started dating in January. Source told People Magazine, Rob is finally excited about life again. China makes him so happy. The insider added, it has been so long since Rob has smiled. Rob used to be such a goofy guy. Now that's 
coming back, he has a reason to smile again. Kardashian was struggling with depression and health issues related to his 100-pound weight gain when he and Black China got together. He has since lost over 50 pounds and is working to reach his goal from of 200 to 205. Rock group The Eagles, actor Al Pacino, and singer-songwriter James Taylor will be among this year's Kennedy Center honorees. Also set to be recognized for their contributions to the arts will be Argentinian pianist Martha Argerich and gospel and blues singer Mavis Staples. The ceremony is to be broadcast December 27th.